Well, hello there. I'm Solomon Shiv Landerman, and welcome to another Gaslight Fortnights. Looks like we've made it to the second Gaslight Fortnight of October. And uh, what a month it's been. Today's story is called Above the Hells. A few words about it. I guess you could say it was born out of a lot of thoughts and observations these days about looking for a savior, personal savior. That savior can be anybody. I have one, you have one. Maybe they're in your life, maybe they're in the world, but seems to be something that is being obsessed over a lot on hard days and hard years, but uh, they're out there and they show up in the strangest places. You just got to find them, but they're there. Anyway. Let's begin. <sighs> Above the hells. Even though she was ascending these endless stairs to the heavens, she felt as though she were drowning. She had begun a game of counting steps at first, but that was a few moods ago. Her heartbreak and panic and frustration had set forth an unholy cocktail of desperation and obsession to achieve summit of the central tower. Halfway up, and she had furiously removed her habit. The climb grew so treacherous that she hadn't bothered with seeing the sparkling red, blue, and gold-stained glass at sunset along the way. She reached the door, nearly out of breath. She still had enough strength to push at the stubborn oak which seemed to be almost fastened to the exit's frame. No doubt the wood had been swollen by the rain last month, which meant no one cared to visit this part of the cathedral very often. One last heave, she decided to herself, and then she would sit on the stairs for an epic sulk and descend back down into her hell. Time to try. She gave it all the might of Christina the Astonishing, and the door seemed to fly open with a spontaneity as if some devilish prankster had been holding it in place the entire time, and now scuttled away as the little sister nearly flew out towards the short wall, the only thing keeping her from plummeting down into the sinful city without. She never forgot the excitement as she panted between feelings of accomplishment, being startled, a sense of relief, cathartic solitude, privacy, and freedom. She closed her eyes as she filled her lungs with the howling night air high above the city. A luxury. Somehow, she felt the presence of something near her, all the way up here. She nearly screamed when her brave eyelids raised to reveal those large, leathern wings of a giant bat 
the spiral horns of a ram about to run her down, clawed hands and eyes even more piercing than the two fangs which sneered hungrily at her. Yes, she nearly screamed, if not for the paralyzing terror which kicked in just before her hands covered her face. If someone were beside her at that time, they would not have heard her even begin a phrase of, Mercy, please, don't. And she froze for an eternal five seconds before mustering the bravery to look past those thin, trembling fingers of hers to see. Stone. Soon the catharsis returned with a laugh as she looked him over. Thank goodness, she said, clutching her laughing heart. A guardian! He towered over her as though he were about to leap over the wall and commit some terrible act upon the cathedral's ill-wishers lurking below. She was slightly giggling now as the sneer of the guardian seemed almost to change to a knowing smile. Almost. Still, how relieving. And then her sadness was remembered like a finger grazing over some raised scar tissue it was recalled and she still knows not what came over her, but she felt possessed to go and throw her arms around him and weep. The guardian said nothing. To his credit, he did not flinch or become overly friendly. He simply stood guard and watched over her, wrapping her in patient solace as though it were one of his huge wings. Perhaps it was nice for the lonely guardian to feel her scars. Perhaps her scars comforted his own. And that was the beginning of their tradition. The stairs became easier, and her scarred and constant guardian is always there when she comes to see him. Well, thanks for watching. I always appreciate it. And uh, feel free to like this or leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't. Anyway, just remember someone's always thinking about you. I'm thinking about you, you know, when I can. But uh, be kind to yourself. Take some extra time for yourself. And... Uh, I'm Solomon Shivlanderman. I'll see you on the next one.